So Aaron, I gotta know, what inspired you to reinvent flippers? Uh, I've always loved them. I've been an Inertia Labs fan since I was tiny. Uh, robots flying through the air are the best. And in this case, Tantrum 1 was an attempt at a flipper, a titanium spring flipper, and it just, it was initially supposed to be multi-bot, um, but reasonableness meant we did not compete with it that way. So, been hunting for a way to do a flyable flipper for years to get the, the energy density you want. Um, it's been fun watching the score progress elsewhere with regards to Hydra's hydraulic pneumatic air spring setup. Um, but as you people can see with Tantrum, we very much like being a very defensive, unkillable brick. And that gets a lot harder to do when you get bigger. So we're trying to figure out how to get the same power density and such for a flipper in a much more compact robot to then play the game against a lot of spinners. So what made you decide to pass Tantrum to Alex Grant and Ginger Smith? Uh, yeah, so I'm lucky enough, we have a 16 person team for Team Seems Reasonable. TV hates using the actual team names, but uh, we've got a great crew of people and we've been running Tantrum for years. And in this case, it made Final Four last year. And with where it was at, we knew that it was small changes could, could push it over the edge. So it's, okay, well, why would we leave that at home if it's that competitive and what's it actually take? And on the, on the home front, uh, Alex very much led the charge in getting Tantrum back and updated in the ring. We got a new driver running it, got practice for Dylan, et cetera. And then him, Alex and Ginger at the event, fantastic job. But it was, we always, we want to push the sport. We want to do new things. We want to prove new tech works and that the meta isn't as fixed as everyone think it, think that, thinks it is. So it's, we applied with two and saw that we had the bandwidth and sponsor support for two. What is the core string? I've seen you have a crazy string contraption that allows you to like weave a string together. What is that material? Yeah, so the, the heart strings <laughs> of a blip, uh, it's, people have heard of UH and W, it gets used a lot in smaller combat robots for frames and stuff, but there's a, effectively a string version of it, often referred to as a trade name of Dyneema. And that's off, most often used in high-performance sailing lines of sort of like boats and fancy rope. It's always this cable or rope is stronger than steel that floats on water. It's, it's that material. So it's UHFW in a string, but we also grease the heck out of it because otherwise it actually melts during usage. How many parts does Blip and Tantrum share? Uh, so one of the nicest parts about our development of Blip was we were allowed to basically focus based on how our architecture works and what we figured out on Tantrum, we were allowed to focus on making the weapon module work. So we built up just a full-size weapon module to do a lot of testing with to see whether or not it would work or not. And when it did, it then turned into a lot more, I'm gonna say, turn the crank, because we were able to wrap a known existing solution for drivetrain and armor setups around that. And a couple of those are like some slight revisions and stuff, but it runs the same drive motor pods, the same axles, the same wheels. Uh, it's just a different piece of aluminum they're bolted to. And then the armor hoop setup is also all shock mounted AR. And same electronics, is sort of same modified ESCs and control side of stuff. So there's, there's a lot of commonality there. Like, and some of it's the same tech, but just different parts. So Aaron, can you tell me a little bit about your education? Because Blip is by far one of the best engineered robots. Uh, might be a surprising answer. And this definitely varies across our team. Like Blip is not, not just me. Um, I went to Iowa State University. It took me five years and I graduated with a less than stellar GPA, but I got my piece of paper. And a lot of that was also just realizing that how school was working was not necessarily how the real world worked or how I worked. And that realization led, led to a bit of the mental shift to get the piece of paper, get out in the real world, because it's definitely different. Um, uh, and I've got some teammates who are straight A, 4.0, amazingly smart people. And like, so Brian Culver did a lot of the CAD design work on, and a lot of the math behind, behind Blip is amazing student, et cetera. Like it takes all types and there's so many different walks of life to play in that just because one particular school operates a certain way doesn't define anything. Oh, good. Come on, Aaron. <laughs> Just an average day here with the builders. <laughs> He's leaving. He doesn't want to do it. <laughs>